Let me talk to you. Yeah. What's happening, everyone? Hope you guys are doing great today and are ready for the next chapter in the Bloodline Saga. If you're new here, of course, like, share, subscribe, and make sure you're following along with the playlist provided for all the updates in this Bloodline Saga. And uh, if you're new here, what's up? So this episode is, um, I'm not going to lie, it gave us some very memeable content. And I normally show a lot of screenshots to go along with my review and description of the events that take place in these episodes. But I'm not going to lie, I'm taking a risk. And honestly, it's worth it because this Tamatanga clip is way too funny not to include as it is. A screenshot does not do his justice yeah. time to go yeah so let us begin so rabid tamatanga was getting ready pacing back and forth per usual before his match with la knight and before leaving solo permits him to leave with tangaloa by his side soon after paul asked if solo spoke with him today to which solo replies with all the time wise man all the time now let's just put a halt right on here at this point because when i was taking notes to get this video ready i actually wrote down that paul was asking solo if he spoke with roman but we always like i've been mentioning in all these video updates we have to pay attention to every single word because it all has meaning and with this scenario right before our very eyes him is taken completely out of context. Paul Heyman is referring to Roman Reigns. That's what you would think that they were talking about in this conversation, right? But again, I feel like this further pushes the idea and the possible fact that it is indeed The Rock that is giving these orders and is acting as the real tribal chief yeah so like i mentioned it's tama tonga versus la knight yeah and tama started the match with getting a pretty good amount of offense in until knight started to pick up steam the obvious and first distraction was done by solo and tonga which lost knight basically all his momentum for tama tonga to essentially continue his ruthless onslaught i mean the way tama wrestles in wwe i'm very happy that he's keeping that like lack of a better phrase ruthless aggression but he's like very crazy when he does it and it's actually really good and it's nice to see it's very refreshing because there's no one on the roster that wrestles like him so it, it really makes the bloodline feel that much more ruthless so as the match continued after a missed samoan splash la knight started to pick up some steam yet again but while setting up for the bft tangaloa pulled tama out for LA Knight to be distracted by Solo, which caused yet another distraction for Tama to lay out Knight with his finisher. Upon celebrating, again, another piece of visual information that we have to look and analyze and dissect per usual. In the background, Paul Heyman depressingly throws up the one while looking up to the sky, almost in a desperate plea for saving solo pretends to place a crown over the head of tamatanga obviously signaling that he believes that tamatanga will be the next king of the ring now aside from that this isn't the only and last time that we see the bloodline for smackdown on tv because later that night randy orton advanced against carmelo hayes defeating him in a pretty good match as well finishing all him off with like a springboard rko and no i'm not saying that randy did the springboard but carmelo hayes ducked the clothesline line try to do a springboard attack and just basically like ate the entire rko like whenever high flyers face orton i'm always looking out for how are they going to set themselves up for the rko you know what i'm saying so after this win and an attempted interview with kathy kelly in the ring the bloodline tried to come out to possibly put some intimidation on orton but he clearly uh was not intimidated and reminded them as such and i'm not gonna lie guys i don't know if i'm the only one that felt like this but yo please tell me you guys were we're not grossed out by randy cutting this very impassioned promo of who he is and the three deadliest letters in the alphabet being rko i mean he was spitting like crazy like it wasn't even like once like it was like so bad like i'm not don't worry i'm not gonna show you video visual but the screenshot that i was able to grab is the best that i could do but it 
just so that you you get some sort of idea like it was so gross and i hope we never have to see that again <laughs> but yeah that's essentially what happens on this week's episode again the emphasis on if we spoke to with roman reigns obviously solo referring not to roman that i like i said I'm, I'm sure a lot of you guys that have been following this y'all can put two and two together i really do feel like it is the rock that is the tribal chief in this situation and it does seem like we are getting near and near for that bloodline king of the ring finals to happen this weekend at saudi arabia for king and queen of the ring but this coming week we do have pamatanga to face off against Randy Orton first time ever. This is the first time ever for a lot of these matches, to be honest, when it comes to Tamatanga. And my prediction is that Randy will lose based off of some sort of distraction or what have you, because let's face it, that's normally what always happens with bloodline matches, especially now that Solo essentially has a brand new unit in the bloodline and he has enough bodies to really make it feel like a viable and threatening faction now i want to also say that tongaloa was announced or at least mentioned on commentary that he's apparently supposed to be in action this week in, on smackdown as well so i'm hoping to see that same sort of ruthless aggression because i'm not gonna lie tongaloa from what i've seen online is just constantly getting memed on and this dude as has been getting no real credit and that clip of him doing those like really weak body shots is kind of like does it's not really a good look so i'm hoping that whatever match they put him in i imagine it might be some sort of a squash match or it'll be against somebody that he will undoubtedly squash in his own way but i need that to happen because i need this bloodline to be savage all across the board it can't not just be tama tonga it needs to be tonga loa so that way it really pushes god gorillas of destiny and i i mean i'm sure that tamatanga will take a lot of aggression from randy orton but inevitably i'm sure the distraction or some sort of thing may cause uh, tamatanga to win the match i'm also wondering now that i think about it if kevin owens is gonna end up helping randy because he hasn't been seen since he got taken out so i wonder if enough time has passed and again they will be in saudi arabia for this week's smackdown so it is a possibility that KO might make some sort of re re surprise return for the Saudi crowd. I just don't know if it'll be enough to get Randy the win, though. Because then again, Randy just has Kevin. Meanwhile, Tamatanga will have Solo and Tangaloa in the corner. So we'll see. But as always, let me know what you guys thought about this week's edition of Friday Night SmackDown. This is the 18th of May edition um, for the continuation of this Bloodline Saga. Again, guys, if you've been enjoying these videos, definitely leave a like and a comment your thoughts on what you might think will happen at this upcoming king and queen of the ring event and if there's anything that happens out of raw this week i'll do another like quick update video or something along those lines but i can't imagine anything outside of whatever might happen with jay so let's hope that we do get this bloodline king of the ring because i'm sure that th this will indefinitely move along the bloodline saga even further and how does this sound this definitely has a ring to it i know we call our boy jay uso the main event jay Jay Uso, but how does main event King Uso sound? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. Make sure you guys are taking care of yourselves, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Yeah.